Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we'll discuss the differences between papilledema and papillitis and how to memorize those differences because this is a very confusing topic and people tend to confuse them with each other. So I have made a table for your convenience and here I've listed all the possible differences between papilledema and papillitis and how you can differentiate them on your case scenario. And later on, I'll show you how I learned it and my trick to know the differences between them. So, always remember that papilledema is always bilateral. And it has a gradual onset, slow onset and bilateral, it's papilledema. Whereas, papillitis is always sudden and it's always unilateral. Well, there can always be exceptions in both cases, but that's very rare. In papillary edema, whenever you'll see a case scenario, there will be a mention of any systemic involvement like headache, nausea, vomiting, mostly projectile vomiting. And there will be episodes where the consciousness is lost and there's blacking out and graying out vision of vision. Whereas none of this is experienced in a patient suffering from papillitis. So now, a very high yield and important concept about papilledema is that there's a gradual loss of vision. Whereas in papillitis, there's a sudden loss of vision. Because in papilledema, there's a gradual enlargement of the blind spot. Whereas in papillitis, there is central scotoma. So whenever there's a case scenario of early papilledema, there will always be systemic involvements and systemic symptoms will be mentioned like headache, projectile vomiting, nausea and recurrent attacks of blacking out because only the blind spot is enlarging slowly and the patient isn't yet aware because it's not obscuring his vision yet. There is only peripheral loss of vision yet whereas in papillitis there is central loss of vision. So papillitis is detected quite early. Another high yield thing to remember about papillary edema is that there is no pain while extraocular movements. Whereas in papillitis, there is the patient does feel pain while performing his extraocular movements. So as I've already mentioned, there are blurring attacks in papillary edema, but no blurring attacks in papillitis. The pupil reaction is normal in papillary edema, but not in papillitis. So you can see that papillitis is kind of more severe than papillary edema. The vitreous is normally clear in papillary edema, but there may be some cells present in posterior witness in papillitis. Another important thing that you will see while examining the fundus of a patient with papillary edema is that the central cup of the optic disc is retained. This I'll show you later in another slide too. But in papillitis, there is blurring of the edges and the central cup is very much blurred as compared to the optic disc in papilla edema. Moving on to the clinical investigations, you are most likely to find an intracranial space occupying lesion in case of a pap papilla edema patient. But in case of a papillitis patient, you may detect a demyelinating disease like multiple sclerosis. The CSF pressure in case of a papilla edema patient is raised because there is impaired cerebrospinal fluid circulation mostly. But in papillitis, it is usually normal. The visual evoked potential in case of papilledema is mostly always normal but in papillitis it is abnormal. So what you need to understand from this is that papilledema is mostly always bilateral and it is very gradual and there's a peripheral loss of vision whereas in papillitis it's sudden, it's unilateral and there are no systemic involvements and there's central loss of vision and it is detected earlier in its clinical course. Here you can easily see the difference between papilledema and papillitis. You can see the hemorrhages, you can see the blurring of the edges of the optic disc and papillitis on the right side and you can see the sharp margins of the optic disc uh, at the left side in papilledema. So here is my hack about how I learned that which symptoms and signs are associated with papilledema and which symptoms and signs are associated with papillitis and how to differentiate between them when a clinical scenario is given to me. 
it may seem a little stupid but it works for me and hopefully it works for you too so how i have learned it is that papilledema is a longer word whereas papillitis is a shorter word so papilledema has a gradual onset a slow onset and it has a longer word so it has more involvement it has a bilateral involvement of your optic discs it it has systemic symptoms, systemic signs. Whereas in papillitis, papillitis is a short word. It ends with itis. So you can understand the inflammation and the inflammatory signs associated with it. Like the pain in the cells in the vitreous, the inflammatory cells in the vitreous. There is shorter coverage because it's a shorter word. There is no bilateral involvement. There are no systemic involvement. There is severe ocular effects. But... As compared to papilla edema, it's limited very much to the eye and the intraocular effects. So the investigations and assessments are pretty straightforward. Uh, you just have to perform the general examination, the blood pressure, the blood glucose levels. You have to check the blood CP and the ESR, the serological test for syphilis and other diseases. You have to do a complete neurological examination and you have to also perform a lumbar puncture. But beware, in case of papilla edema, you have to exclude space occupying lesions by first doing MRI and CT scan. Because if you perform a lumbar puncture in a patient who has a space occupying lesions, there are the chances of herniating in the spinal cord herniating downwards due to the pressure and the gravity effects. Uh, you have to perform a parametry to see if there is a central scotoma or there is a peripheral loss of vision and you can perform the fundus examination to check the hemorrhages and everything inside for a detailed fundus examination. So once you have done all the investigations and assessments, uh, here are some of the signs you should look for to further differentiate between papilledema and papillitis. So number one, as I've already told you, if there is space occupying lesion in brain, it's papilledema. If there is increased ICP, it's in intracranial pressure, there is papilledema. If there is an intracranial infection, if there's pseudotumor cerebri, spinal cord tumors, premalignant hypertension, preeclampsia, hypervitaminosis A, it's papilledema. Whereas in papillitis, there's such a short list, so I think it's very easy to remember. There's demyelinating disease, there's viral or bacterial infection, intraocular inflammation, or systemic autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases could be systemic lupus or systemic polyarthritis, and intraocular inflammation, as you already know, is uveitis, endophthalmitis, benophthalmitis, or other infections. So hopefully you have understood the differences between papillitis and papillitis and i have made a case scenario for you so you can test yourself on this so there's a 50 year old male and he goes to somewhere say a shop and he experiences a sudden loss of consciousness and he blacks out but the vision is normal and later when he wakes up he starts to vomit and there's projectile vomiting you can pause the video to really think about it and then think of an answer but i think it's pretty easy right now so it's papilledema the answer is papilledema because you know there is the vision is normal there's peripheral loss of vision because the damage has not yet reached to the point where it can cause damage to his vision so he the patient thinks that his vision is normal because it's a gradual onset disease there's systemic involvement and thus you'll easily understand that this is a case of papilledema so I think at this point it is very clear but I'll again sum it up for you just know that whenever there is the bilateral involvement of the optic disc there is a gradual onset there is systemic involvement it's papilledema well there are chances that papilledema can involve only one optic disc but they are very rare and in case of frontal lobe tumors like pseudo Kennedy syndrome and foster Kennedy syndrome but I don't think the examiners, examiners will ever ask about such rare conditions. In case of papillitis, it has a rapid onset, it ends with itis, so know that there is pain with extraocular movements, there are cells present in posterior vitreous, uh, there is no systemic involvement, and it has severe ocular effects. The pupillary reaction is also abnormal in case of papillitis, and the color vision is also not normal. So papillitis has more severe ocular effects, but no systemic involvement. But papilledema has a gradual onset, doesn't have that much severe ocular effects, but involves the system and has systemic involvements like vomiting, nausea, headache, uh, visions, uh, sorry, blacking out, transient attacks of blacking out. 
So hopefully it's all clear to you now and you can easily diagnose papilledema or papillitis whenever you're given a case scenario. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. If you have any queries and suggestions, please comment down below. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.